Hey folks. Howdy hey. Look where I'm at. I'm uh, back on my couch. My son took my art camera into the desert. Uh oh. He silenced my thing. Okay. It's amazing how much uh, work goes into like uh, just just re mm, recapturing all the stuff that I had figured out on the other computer in the garage and then transferring that to the not garage. So I got a little something different to do today uh, because I'm running out of time. It's the 22nd. I have to have this video out by the 1st. Uh, which means I really have to have it, like, uploaded to YouTube about... Mm, four or five days before that. So that it can give me my, uh, copyright strike, or not strike, what it, it has to say. Not suitable for all audiences, so you can't monetize it. And then I have to request a manual review, and then they look at it like they have for the past hundred videos and say oh yeah turns out you're right this is this is fine for all viewers oh what a bunch of dummies we are I wish they said that um Ben Morda hey folks let me know where my levels are at because again everything's brand new so we've got we've got music playing and my voice and can you hear both that would be good to know. I'm gonna put this tool in the tip jar here. All right. Uh, Van Morda is giving me Scola eyes. Very nice. Ah, <sighs> where were we? So this is, uh, this is Adobe Premiere, for anyone who doesn't know. And uh, here's these little video clips that I put in here. For most of the Shadow of Colossus build, Aleth the Baki, hello. Uh, can you tell me if you can hear my voice? Hear my voice? Um, right, so I had anywhere between one and three cameras rolling during the entire build of the sculpture and because I've never seen this particular thing done before I wanted to do it which is to have a documentation of the entire process of a giant build like this so a lot of it is done in very fast forward and um, a lot of the time that I spend in editing you can hear me fine. Great. Um, hmm, that was weird. What was that little react thing? What does that mean? Um, yeah, what, what is this little... What, what does that mean? Could, do you guys see this weird little head that's above the uh, above my tip cup here that says Kappa when I mouse over it? Or is that just me seeing that because I have some weird overlay? I bet I have a weird overlay. I was, I was trying to figure out how to make it uh, that points thing and uh, I didn't, didn't get to it this morning. Anyway, um, right, so this is, all this footage is uh, from day 56. At some point, I, well, when I started recording, I thought I would just record for a day. I'd have that video as day one, and then the next day, day two, etc. Um, and that ended up not working out great because, um, I mean, there were some days where I would work on it for five minutes, and that's all the time I had. And then other uh, times where I would be working on one, like, thing for months and it made more sense to just group this. so so they're called days but they're not really days since I spent four and a half years on this um, the most frustrating thing in going back to all this is that there were things that I did where I would I would describe what I'm doing 
let's give an example here real quick. Um, oh, I need a, I need a good way to. I wish I could have my music on a separate layer in OBS, so I could silence that easily. Oh well. Anyway, okay. So here's me talking. Here's me talking. I'm just gonna drill screws straight into that that stick out just a little bit, and then I'm gonna use this stuff called. Okay, so you can see here this particular camera angle. If I take, uh, if I make make it invisible, you can see. Oh, okay. Here's me talking to the camera, right? This is what uh, cosplay. And so I would have to line up the the different cameras. What, what I do is uh, at the beginning of every take, I just I clap a couple times and that puts these little spikes in the um, in the audio. So here here's how loud I am at any time. Uh, meaning that they, they're going to float around a little bit. It's going to be. And so a clap will make like one like spike. And so I can visually line them up that way. But uh, so the tricky part is that this stuff was filmed years ago and there were times where I would do multiple takes because, you know, I, I said something wrong or I forgot to say something. And that's not usually too hard to, to, to find my way through. But there are times when I would do the same, say the same thing on different days. So I'd be wearing different clothes in different positions, whatever and I can't tell which was the right one. So that's a huge pain in the butt. Meaning that you heat it up, you shape it, and, um, and I, would, I would do some detail. But yeah, so, so this bottom line here is pretty much, I try to make that my cam one. And by that, I mean, it's kind of the one that has the most coverage and can tell, tell the, uh, the biggest visual story. And then I would have a cam two and a cam three where it was set up a little closer. You can get a, that's where we're gonna run into the most real estate problem. Get a different angle on it. Uh, but yeah, so all of these little cuts that you see here, those are all the places where I have to go to the right frame, I have to cut it, then I have to move the next frame back to it. And it just takes forever. Editing takes forever. Here's where it doesn't take too long. And that is in cases where I have a whole bunch of footage where I'm not saying anything significant. Uh, there's not several different camera angles to choose from. And it's just a matter of selecting them all and saying, okay, play at maximum speed. That the maximum Premiere Pro can do for some reason is 6,000 times. So this is sped up 6,000 times. Um, and f depending on the application, so there's another editorial choice that I'm making is like, where do I want to slow it down because I'm doing something kind of new or something interesting? Um, and then if it's something that I've, that I've done several times before, I'll speed it up to maximum. Um, so yeah, that's where the interesting editing choices come in, at least when there's only one camera like there was in this case. Um, I'm kind of surprised I have, like I worked ridiculously hard to set up multiple cameras most of the time. But not this time. I have a feeling it's because this was a time of year, you can see the, the orange light from the heater flickering back there. This was the time when uh, the garage was like, you know, uh, probably 30 degrees, uh, maybe a little more. I, it was rare that I could actually see my breath, but it was close to that. So that definitely uh, put a dampener on a lot of stuff on like really putting in the, the extra mile. You know what I mean? And I figured if I'm just kind of doing the same kind of thing that you've seen over and over, it's totally fine to have that just sped way up. But I mean, there's an example of where I would like to go back. Let's see if I can find it again. Like this is the first time I've ever used a little uh, roller thing to do a pattern. And actually, now that I think about it, it's, it's literally the only 
stamp that I ever used that was not something that I created from scratch. It just, I happened to have this little roller that happened to be exactly the right uh, pattern that, that is in the game. It was really weird. Let's see if I can find it. It's right around here. Yeah, yeah. See that little green disc there? Like, that's the texture in the game. So, okay, so in this case, this is kind of a, it, it's interesting. It's interesting to me. So this is something where I would want to go in and make it not as uh, as fast, as sped up. And I lost it already. Wait, was it here? Here. Okay. Okay. So I cut that. Now this is something that's a huge pain is when I have all this all this edited footage on the other side of it when I decompress this it's going to be longer and then I have to manually go in and move everything uh, which is super annoying like so here's something that's really cool if you click between uh, your seat your clips and just hit the delete key it'll automatically move everything on the sequence to close that gap I'm gonna undo that uh, as far as I know there's no version of that where it does the opposite so if I put this to let's see speed duration and yeah right now it's at 6,000 if I move it to say 200 it's going to suddenly become very very long right uh, so this is a case where I'd want to go in see exactly how far I want it to go Well, this is sped up 200 times, you guys. This is twice as fast as I actually did it. <laughs> yeah, but so that gets the point across, right? So I will cut that. I'll put this back to uh, the 6,000. Although sometimes it's nice to ramp it, so maybe I'll, I'll do 3,000. It's less jarring if the speed doesn't go from, you know, a very low number to a very high number. But either way, I need to make room for this new piece here. So the only way I know to do that is to manually do a bunch of futzing. So I have to zoom all the way out. I have to grab all the footage on this side of it by dragging this big rectangle. Zoom way back in. Looks like I didn't. Okay, has it? Okay, good. Uh, move this all over. And grab this. Pop it back into place. And, you know, God forbid I didn't move it far enough. And then I try to put this long one back back in the place because then I have to zoom way back out, select the whole thing again, blah, blah, blah. It's super annoying. Okay. Oh, and actually, no, this is fine. I was going to say I could I could decompress the end of this a little bit to, to shift the gears smoother, like I was saying, but this will work fine. Um, Let's see, so what do we have going on here? Oh, okay. This is this is where I have my my uh, end bumper music uh, made by the fantastic uh, Mr. Dusk. I had this I had this piece custom made, and I paid him uh, the money it was worth, which was more than I could afford or should have spent. But it's important to do that from time to time. But anyway, I need to move this stuff actually because this is no longer the end of the video. I decided to add more because I've been coming in at about an hour-ish on these videos. Um, but you know, it's longer than most people will ever, ever watch unless it's like on in the background or something. But um, if if I'm ever going to get this project done, it's got to be, they've got to be pretty, pretty beefy videos because... 
yeah, I, was it 550 hours uh, the project took, something like that. So even even speeding that up 6,000 times on, you know, I'd say probably 80% of it is sped, super sped up. But I mean, there's still a lot of just talking and tips and stuff like that in there. Yeah, for instance, this this is a this was a scene that I shot a couple different times. I had all these different pickup shots, and they were sadly in different day folders, so it was really hard to track them down. Organizing your your video uh, project is like it's it's that next level thing that professionals all do intuitively, and until you run up into into a big complicated project, you kind of don't realize how important it is. But man, it's important to be organized. Because I was um, as I'm looking over the footage and stuff that I have, I noticed a lot of problems with white balance because I was using either a light background or aluminum foil, which is reflecting a lot, a lot of light. So I needed a really neutral thing and. By the way, can you guys hear my voice on the video? I'm assuming it's really quiet because it's coming through the desktop audio. Uh, let's see. And then... Lots more speedy stuff. Okay, so here is where... It gets tricky, especially if I have music going and I'm doing things with tools. Uh, I, I, I rely on this audio graph down here a lot to tell when I might be talking. Because again, this was years ago. I don't, I don't remember all the things I said about what. And so I, I kind of have to scan through. I'm like, oh, okay, that was this big sound spike here is a saw. It's not me talking. Uh, what about this part? Oh, that's a belt sander, right? So yeah, I just kind of have to go through, double check all this stuff, and then when I, after I've confirmed that there's no talking there, I can just delete the audio parts. It's really quiet from the video. Yeah, okay. Here's another super annoying thing is like, okay, so here's this, here's a spot where I got up, walked away from the camera and went to where ostensibly another camera is either my, my head camera that I had or uh, another one on a tripod in the other area where I do all the sanding and grinding and stuff. Can I always find those clips? Nay, I cannot, and that's really frustrating since one of my goals was to have the entire thing, but, you know, is it a huge loss? No, it doesn't, like, I probably just push that thing against the grinder for a minute and let go, and that's all that really happened. So it's not, it's not, like, ridiculously important for the spirit of the project, but it's still just annoying as, it annoys my OC. Okay, so clearly there is a camera set up here, right? It's like, oh, I wonder if that actually was the same one. So I tried to name them. So this is day 57, cam 1D, parentheses 14. And this is day 57, cam 1D, parentheses 13. So you would think that that means that it's the same camera and just I just moved it but it's also possible that if I move it over there I'm gonna find that it matches mm. Did that 
Mm, maybe, maybe not. No, probably not. But since, since the camera is in like slightly different areas, uh, it's totally possible that uh, the sound spikes and stuff that I see are going to be a little bit different. Like sometimes they come awfully close and I'm like, ah, is that, is that the same? So let's see, if I walk off here, do I walk into frame on the other one at about the same time? It's pretty close. Okay, now do I leave it? No. I'm there the entire time, but I'm back here. Okay, so yes, that confirms that it is not uh, documenting the same the same uh, moment from a different angle. So that's what I spend uh, hours and hours and hours on on every one of these things, and I like I know it's stupid. Like no one cares about these things very much. Uh, including myself, but it's something that I just, I, I just want it to exist. So why do I do this? Yes, it would fry your brain. It would fry anyone's brain. Uh, and then ideally, so a lot of these uh, chapters I've had to leave off with like no, um, uh, like bookend of me being like, okay, I did this thing. See you guys next time. Uh, and that just doesn't feel too great when, when I can, I like to have some footage of, um, of, you know, me talking at the end, but it is not always to be so I, I still don't know how long this is going to be right right now this is saying it's uh about six hours long but that's because i haven't compressed all of all of this video yet so to get rid of the sound i select all of these pieces that i i did my quick kind of scan through to make sure there's no talking uh let's see I unlink them and uh delete the sound Grab all these bad boys. Oh, right. So the other thing that I need to do is a pass to see, okay, am I doing anything that is new or interesting that you can't kind of get the idea by seeing it in fast forward? I think most of it, you pretty much get the idea. Uh. Every once in a while, you know, the camera was just positioned in such a place that most of the work is happening up off the screen. And that's always like a question of, uh, do I leave that in there? Really, it's only for a couple seconds after everything is, is sped up. So it's not that big a deal. But again, all these things I learned that, you know, if I did this uh, next time, I would do it very differently. Which is something I've talked about a lot on my channel is just know the first time you do anything it's going to be uh bad and the next time you do it it's going to be twice as good at half the speed and it just kind of keeps increasing from there okay so that made all of these six thousand times but they're they're all spread out so now i need to go to the end where this big gap is, delete, delete, delete. I'll bet you there's some kind of shortcut tool to do this. Uh, whoops, I do not know what it is. This uh, delete empty gaps thing was like the biggest relief to me because I, I did several episodes without knowing that where every time I moved any footage I had to like zoom way out grab everything zoom way in like scooch it a couple pixels back and forth uh, so that thing has saved me countless hours 
probably days at this point. Okay, so that brings me in ooh, just under an hour. And that's where I think, okay, so I'm trying to balance the long term goals, which is get this video series done so I can get back to the stuff that is more interesting to myself and everyone else um, versus get this out at the first of the month. Now, I think, actually, let me double check how much footage I have in here. So this is day 57. 1D. Let me make sure I have all of it. Day 57. Oh, there's still a ton more footage I can put in here. Okay, good. It was D18. So in here I've got Up to D19. Is that in there? Oh, this must be 19. Yes. Okay. So, moving on to E. And one super annoying thing that I don't know how to do a different way is. Anytime I try to grab, like I just want to drag all the E's out here. E1 through 13. Uh, the problem being, if you select them all and drag them all at once, they seem to come in in a random order. And I don't know if that's based on the order that I've selected them in the thing. It'd probably be easy to test that theory one minute. Now that I'm saying it out loud. Let's see what happens if I select 6 through 13. Okay, so I started with the 6. I'm going to grab it here. I'm going to drag it out here. What do we end up with? Is this 6? Yeah, so that's 6 and then it goes 13, 11, 10, uh, 9, 8, 7. Where's 11? Oh, 13. Where's 12? It just didn't put in 12? Or am I not seeing it? Anyway, yeah, so that's super annoying. Um, I try selecting them in a different order. So if I do 13 through 6, move them here. 13. 13, 11, 10, 6, 8, 7. <laughs> Why? There's, there's like no rhyme nor reason to why it would do it that way. Here's 12. I wonder why it never... Oh, maybe it was doing 12, but 12 is so tiny, I just couldn't see it. Yeah. Let's see what's going on in 12 here. What is this? Oh, that's me probably accidentally pressing record and then realizing I pressed record and turning it off. Okay. <sighs> Seventy-six. Hello getting an insider's peek into how incredibly fun it is to edit my videos. Okay, this is the scanning process to make sure there's no talking. If I have a mask over my mouth, there's a pretty good chance I'm not talking and not facing the camera either.
Beautiful. Okay, so none of these have any dialogue, so I'm free to unlink the sound from them and then delete said sound. And now I'm looking for uh, new things that I haven't done before. So for instance, this is where I start laying out the uh, tiles for the base. I'm going to go ahead and cut that out and call that special. And give it a look see. And I don't have. Oh, right. Okay. So I may have other footage of this. So this is cam one. So I need to try looking for day 57 cam two. Okay. There's only this. Okay, and I know that's not it. That was talking about the table. Uh, is there a cam three? There is not. Interesting. Okay, so apparently during this period of time, uh, setting up multiple cameras was something I did not have the mental and emotional faculties to do. Okay, so this is a little thing that's somewhat new. Let me pull that out. Uh, sanding and carving, nothing new. Lots and lots of carving. It turns out I did a lot of carving on this project. What's happening here? Just futzing with his crotch, the usual. I'm like a tailor. stuff. So I'll just do this guy. Uh, speed duration 6,000. Boom. All of these guys. And I have checked. There is indeed no shortcut for doing the same operation over and over again. Again, Adobe, what are you thinking? Adobe might be angry at me for uh, dissing them. That's my guess. Or it's because this stuff up here is like making it confused. Okay, let's try moving this stuff somewhere else. Now it works. Weird. Uh, what if I move that over there? Now it works. Okay. Not need to be at 
one speed, I can make it probably three times speed and you'll still get the picture really well. Clicking and deleting. Okay. And after that round, we're at still an hour, but I want to see hey, what happens if I just get all the way through quote unquote day 57? Was that F? Was that? I think that was E. Yes, that was E. Okay, now it's time for F. Snippets. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Andrew. Yeah, one thing I would definitely do different is uh, not use the head cam because um, when you speed it way up, as you can see, everything is very shaky. <clears throat> I would have just had a camera above the desk. I, you know, I thought it would give me the best, uh, like direct artist view. <laughs> Here's how I had to make sure my, my camera was tilted right. So I had two mirrors. I held one up, one up above the camera behind my head because it doesn't have a, a video viewer on the front of it. And then look in the mirror to see that I was seeing the mirror in my camera. Ridiculous. Ridiculous, I say. through and look for any talking. Anything that looks suspiciously like it could be talking. I mean, when there's only one camera uh, angle, it makes things ridiculously, like, a thousand times faster than when you have two or three. So, uh, thanks, previous Josh, for being too lazy to set up your other cameras. But also... Although... This doesn't make sense, right? Because... I have video evidence that I had my other camera go. No, that is this camera. Okay, all of this is done from first person camera. Right. I was thinking, oh, there has to be another camera angle on this one, but no, there doesn't. Okay, let's, uh, this might be important. I want to point out that I'm using I'm using a different material this time. Yeah, I was trying the magic sculpt.
What up, G? Is that cultural appropriation anymore? Does it still count as cultural appropriation if you're using super outdated uh, slang and lingo from other cultures? So I'll just throw those on the pile as well. Oh wow. It became summer all of a sudden. Impressive. Alright. How are we doing? Any talking? some interesting stuff going on just out of frame as usual you guys you guys why am I such an incomplete Serena's engagement ring glows in the dark wow and with stone-like stuff and lay that glows. That's pretty cool. These are the shorts that I wore on our little uh, desert video trip. And... What, was it in the cave? They ripped his pants really bad somewhere, and then like the next day, I ended up ripping like the inseam like all the way down. There's pretty much just like a giant hole on my crotch. Fortunately, it was the end of the day, and we were able to drive straight to the hotel. But that was pretty funny. Okay, so there's. Some pretty interesting stuff going on in a lot of this, so. But there is no talking, which is disturbing to me. I might want to do some VO to indicate what's going on. Yeah, so it goes from like really standard stuff I've been doing for the past couple years and then suddenly it's like hey now I'm making a mold of all of these and man I just I'm really disappointed I don't have multiple camera angles on this and surprised to the point where I'm wondering well this is what I should do so this is day 57 I'm gonna look at um, 58, just in case, like, maybe some files got misplaced. Okay, a lot of mold making going on here, but it looks like it's all after what I was doing. Let's look at cam 
two, no cam two, cam three. Okay, some cam three. But I think, yeah, this is definitely later in the process. Okay. Yeah, I may have to, I may have to do some VO. Tore the back side of a pair of jeans in the cave. That's not the ape caves, but in that vicinity. Was that the one where we went with uh, your friend, what was her name, Elizabeth or something? Where uh, Uncle Paul took us? Nuke it, I mean, nuke the sound. Okay. Look how beautiful the floor of my shop is. Really nice. Okay, so standard, 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 standard. God, those things took so long. Okay. All of this stuff can go to 6,000. Emily. Oh, that's right. That wasn't me. Can't remember what the cave is called, but it's more challenging than the ape caves and has a few nice side tunnels to crawl through. Yeah, that was one of the... That, uh, right. We went with Emily on the way back, uh, hit a deer, totaled Uncle Paul's car. That was a real bummer. That was super creepy. When we got out of the car, there were all those coyotes howling through the hills it was just like echoing it was super eerie and you know our, our adrenaline's already going crazy because you know hit a giant deer and felt like we were about to die that's also the trip where i had my very favorite um can of pepsi i think it was pepsi yeah he just had a cooler in the back of his car you know ice some pop got out of that cave Whatever it was about that physical exertion, the like being claustrophobic, finally escaping, getting out, it was light, it was beautiful out there, that ca that cold can of Pepsi. <laughs> this, uh, this Twitch stream brought to you by Pepsi. Coyotes were singing victory, took down the deer and one of those weird rolling monsters at the same time. <laughs> yes, I imagine they were very pleased, very pleased with themselves. Frustrating that it's all off camera. Grr. Okay, so to minimize this, I can find the frames that it mostly is on camera. Okay. Play those at kind of normal speed. That way you kind of get a sense for what's going on, kind of. Kinda, kinda. Okay, so here's another good spot. 
shows that I'm building a mold box. Oh man, getting a industrial glue gun from Home Depot one of the one of the best purchases I've made in a long time. Just don't have to deal with plugs. You got a much like nicer, finer needle. More of the same, more of the same, more of the same. Okay, that's, that's me kind of making sure everything's in place. More gluing. Cut. So here's some, oh, okay. There it's, it's almost in frame for a second. show the rubber. There we go. Oh, and get it for for just a moment. That's all I need. That's all I need. Hey Bjorn, what's up? Pepsi, please sponsor. That's right. Please sponsor Pepsi. I could use some Pepsi right now. Yes I can. Van Morta, welcome. Wait, Van Morta, you've already been here. But you are showing off my amazing Scola icons, which, are they as good as Bjorn's uh, em emojis? No, but, uh, mm, boy, that's, putting them together like that just makes me feel totally inadequate. Okay, so, speed duration, six of my thousand, please. Bjorn, uh, you should come to the Seattle Open Broadcaster Organization uh, barbecue in Gasworks Park at 3 o'clock today. I'm probably going to be there around 4. I'm bringing burgers. Okay. Is this, this is normal speed. Although, it doesn't need to be normal speed. It could probably be 300. I find that 300 is like that sweet spot where... It still seems like almost, almost a, it's so close to normal speed that it just looks like things are a little bit twitchy, but you still read, like you're able to perceive everything just fine at that speed. depending on how new the thing like if it's if it's something if it's a technique or something that I haven't shown before uh, I usually stick to one to three hundred um, if it's something you've only seen once before or it's very slow like this thing I'll go up to 500 You know, I don't think they'll kick you out just because you've missed uh, streams, Bjorn. <laughs> uh, I understand being far behind, though. Understand it well. That is, that's actually why I'm doing a uh, <laughs> a video editing stream today, uh, which is which is I've never done before, and it's probably not very fun or interesting. Uh, but you know, hey, you get to hang out with me while I do something. How great is that, you guys? Oh, you're neglecting the hell out of your community. Yeah. Um, I'll be sure to bring it up at the meeting when we decide who we're going to kick off the island. You know, Bjorn's really been uh, neglecting us, so... <laughs> uh, 
Okay, what's going on here? Oh, I'm pouring more rubber off screen where you can't see it. Great. Super great. Kind of see. Oh. Kind of make out a little bit there, so I'm going to cut there. Knock you to 6,000. Okay. All right, and now we are outside. We made it outside. We made it to summer. Got through the winter and made it to summer. That's pretty awesome. Kind of a fun little shot removing the head so i'll probably put that at about 200. okay and then just sand 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 like a maniac uh, let's see do i establish what i'm putting on i guess right here you see that it's patch and paint so that's a good spot to slow it down. Since that's in. I'm sure someone has heard of Bjorn. Someone. Somewhere. I mean... Uh, when I was there, I was talking to, uh, there There were not one, but two uh, chess streamers. And I was like, y you know, I never thought of it, but that makes sense that that would be a thing. I just, you know, it's so far out of my realm of uh, conception that I hadn't thought of it. But it was, it was fun meeting him. One of them was in charge of uh, Twitter's back end. Let's do 200 on this. Hey, Nightbot. How well did Nightbot work? Uh, formal tutorials, his website at, it still doesn't break up the lines in the way that I have it actually formatted in the box. But it does look like all the links actually exist. So yeah. It's close enough. I'm gonna I'm gonna mark that off as close enough. Until I get like a community organizer or person who could be like, hey, let me make that nice for you. Okay, so that's Pretty straightforward stuff. I'll set that at say 5,000. Almost full speed. And by full, I mean maximum, of course. Okay, so this is just more sandy. Is there any reason for it to be zoomed out as much as it is? That is the question. Oh my god, look at those massive uh, sunflowers we had. One year, Heather grew sunflowers, and they got so big that they were falling over, and I had to tie them uh, to screws I drilled into the house. It was hilarious. They were, they were like as tall as the roof. All of the links are on separate lines, too, which helps a ton. Uh, mostly... Yeah, Most, or maybe it's just the way my window, let me see. I can't spread my window out more. Oh well. Oh, uh, I almost forgot. Let's do our cognitive bias of the day. Sadly, I do not have it on my backdrop, but I have it here. All right. 
So today we are on uh, need to act fast. Uh, we favor simple looking options and complex information over complex ambiguous options. And so we've done life is better effect, Occam's razor, conjunction fallacy. Now we have the Delmore effect. I do not believe I've heard of this one. Delmore effect. Here's images for it. Ooh. One of these looks awesome. What is this? Wow. That's a creepy effect. Let's see what this is. We favor options that appear simple or that have more complete information over complex, ambiguous options. We'd rather do the quick, simple thing than the important, complicated thing. Even if the important, complicated thing is ultimately a better use of time and energy. Oh, wow. Yeah, how, do, how does that not affect everyone all the time? Uh, this looks like a, a great, okay. I've heard the rhetoric from both sides. Time to do my own research on the real truth. Literally the first link that agrees with what you already believe. Jackpot! Yep, yep. This is, this is, uh, beautiful and wonderful. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the internet age, everyone. Uh, Guybrush790 says, Hi Josh, have you ever read the book Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman? I think it would be just your thing. Uh, let's check this out real quick. Uh, oh no, that's my Patreon. That's not what I wanted to bring up. Um, where's my blog? Wait, I think I just saw it. Go away. Here it is. Okay. Uh, let's search. Thinking fast and slow. Like, I'm almost sure that I... Oh, yes, here it is. Yeah, I wrote a blog about the book and my thoughts on it uh, right here. If you go to uh, my joshuaforman.blogspot.com and search for Chance Disguised as Skill. Yeah, I love that book. Um... And, uh, I mean, I came to it late after I'd already listened to many podcasts and read many articles and stuff about uh, cognitive biases. So there wasn't much new in it for me, but it was nice kind of seeing the, the whole kind of thing laid out. Get it from the source, as it were. The, the half of the source that still lives. Ben Morda, you like finding errors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, Bjorn is saying it's because there's a missing space after the uh, slash at the end of the IG link. Hmm. Okay. IG being Instagram, I assume. So doing doing the fast and easy and like conceptually simple thing like that's almost such such a human condition it's like um it's like the maybe not the but in my mind the primary kind of hurdle that you come over as you mature into adulthood and of course adults still struggle with it constantly daily but uh i mean for kids it's like there's there's no question about it it's just yes of course i'm gonna do the easy simple thing that sounds simplest and uh I believe Kahneman talks about the marshmallow experiment and thinking fast and slow where they tracked kids who were you know in a laboratory setting, they're like, hey, you could have this marshmallow now, or I'm gonna go away and when I come back, you can have two marshmallows. And the kids who sat there and waited for the two marshmallows, they tracked them over the next, I don't know, 30 years or whatever. And sure enough, those kids are just way more successful in life. So whatever that impulse is that allows some people to 
to delay the gratification and do the harder thing. And, and often the harder thing is, you know, doing more research, not just automatically accepting the first thing you hear that's that's simple and fits the way you already perceive the universe to be. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good one. I, I, I've heard of that so many times. I don't understand why it is specifically called uh, the Delmore effect. Probably named after someone. Okay. Delmore effect as defined by Paul Whitmore. Crap not named after him, uh, tends to provide more articulate and explicit goals for lower priority areas of our life. Uh, it appears that the daunting nature of truly important goals may motivate the self to deflect this anxiety by attending to less important, but also less threatening goals. Okay, people fail to form goals for most important areas. When asked to describe personal priorities, people provide more accurate and explicit goals for lower priorities. Yeah. Um, you, okay, so, so this is kind of akin to like how you can feel more, um, more satisfied with yourself if you sit down and write a, a to-do list, right? And it's got stuff that you would do already. So it's like, get dressed, eat breakfast, you know, go to work. And then you check those off and you feel really good about yourself because it was just, it's just kind of a simple no brainer thing that was gonna happen anyway. And you kind of fool your brain into thinking that you've accomplished something. So I'm guessing it's kind of the same, the same kind of subconscious process that's going on there where it's like, yeah, you can sit and think about how your actions align to your values and the values of the people around you or your, you know, stated goals, but there's so much in there that it's like it it could lead to analysis paralysis where you're just constantly having to reevaluate everything every time you get more information. So it's a cognitive heuristic that's kind of necessary to make your way through life, uh, but it can also backfire in horrendous ways. Think about all the companies that are like driven by, we gotta have a profit this quarter. And you know, so they'll do all sorts of stupid things that hurt them in the long run, but give them that quarterly profit they can take to the board uh, think about how we deal with environmental issues. Again, it's like, well, you know, we, we need to keep our economy growing and blah, blah, blah. And sorry, environment. That's just how it's going to be. All right. So now I've got everything pretty much blocked out. Oh wow, Bjorn doing the doing the heavy lifting. Thank you. <laughs> Short for delay more. <laughs> uh, that's that's pretty good. Very clever. Okay, so now I'm coming in at about uh, hour fourteen minutes, somewhere around there. That that feels good to me. That's a good chunk of work. There's this massive like the second almost half hour there's no talking not ideal uh mm, okay speaking of doing the easy thing instead of the harder thing uh, let me look at day 58 real quick see if i have some good talking bits at the beginning it doesn't look like i do oh but i got some beautiful close-ups um, talking here. No, this is where I'm preparing to attach the beard. You should be very interested in that, Bjorn. Barb is about to get his beard. 
Uh, yeah, but no talking. Um, yeah, there's just no dialogue at all on day 58, which means, oh god, or, so the, what that means is that the video, the next video would start out with a giant chunk of no introduction, no talking, day 59 in here, let's look at day 59, is there talking on here, because if there's talking right off the bat on 59 then I might yeah usually there would be um, audio down there if there was let's see looks like here's talking sounds sinking oh uh, this is where I'm rebuilding the legs yeah that's let's see here's talking Hmm. Sooner talking. No. Beard hype. Okay. Yeah, there's just looks like there's no nice way to do this so I think I think I'm just gonna have to start doing voiceovers for parts of this yeah B Bjorn you could you could see this is this was the uh, maximum beard effort that I was able to pull off it's <laughs> just this like these sad little scraggles hanging about eight inches down it was, it was very sad I'll tell you I'll tell you what but you know, I was making a Colossus with a beard for four and a half years. I had to grow my beard out to match it. It's just, it's the rules. So I did my best. Gave it the old college try. Well, almost literally. I mean, I spent longer working on this Colossus than most people spend at college. Think about that. Think about that. Okay. So. Now that I know the basic uh, timing, let me get this. I don't know why all of this sound stuff is down there. And I swear there's got to be a shortcut in Premiere to move your audio up uh, without accidentally sliding it to the side, but I do not know what that is. Ah, stop it! No! Dude, be good! It's not working. Sound effects a little early in there. So it's nice to have all of your dialogue on one layer and then you can have your music on another one. Uh, all right, and so used all our video. Let's go to our music. Bjorn's grabbing some food. Cool. I will. Thanks for stopping by, Bjorn. Appreciate it. Can't wait to uh, see you, I think, next week. Um, Impressive compared to my best efforts at beard growth. All right, uh, Guybrush, is that what your beard was called? Guybrush? Okay. Musics. Why is there no music in my musics? Oh, because I have this search filter on. Okay. Okay, so I have, I just imported a lot of my YouTube random stuff in here. Oh, looks like I grabbed S through R last time. So I'm going to look at my YouTube lab library. Uh, 
No, actually not there. Quick access. Sound effects, musics, YouTube generics. All right. So I'm gonna grab Probably the A's will do fine for now. Throw them in here. So these are all on the YouTube website. You can download them for free. I only picked the ones that I didn't have to give credit for. Not because I don't want to give credit. In fact, I super want to always give credit. Like that's actually an important thing to me. But because I've got hour plus blocks that I need to fill up, the amount of time it would take me to put see see i have down here uh the name of the music and stuff and it's just like it would take forever to change that out every you know two or three minutes so i'm just doing one of those things where i'm um running counter to my values in order to do a a something else uh, what's the word for that um, well I guess my my value of getting this done and produced and out there in the world slightly supersedes my need to give uh, credit to the musicians who made this stuff all right so let's see what I do is I just throw it all on there and then I see what I like and delete the stuff that I do not like. Okay, what does this sound like? So, yeah, failed attempt one was to just sculpt it right on there. That's not gonna work. Attempt two was to make these, uh, I basically rolled out my epoxy clay Got it on the basic shape. See, I did it on these inner thigh pieces too. And then I'm just using these thumbtacks to hold them in place. Here's the problem mm. with that. When I this is not a great order, song. I, I think I on, I tend to want no way to get um, these pins back in a want to be a little more energetic at the beginning. This uh this up and down jaggedy thing usually tells me that it's probably kind of an energetic or has at least has a beat so i'm gonna give that one a try there's steps and i would i would do some detail i'd let it set i'd do more detail that set oh and boy was i wrong about that uh, i'm carving on it and i'm sculpting it and both of those things require tools that have handles and i have to get in at different angles this is nice just not for the beginning uh, all right, I'm just gonna. Oh, this is fun. Uh, makes me think of uh, Final Fantasy One. Brings me back. Okay, so start this here because I'm, I'm kind of crossfading. There's a a good way to. Um, it's just like a button you can press to do that, but I never remember what it is, so I end up just putting in these so in little uh, if you controllers. The lower this line is, the lower the volume is, so that and makes I it fade up. Do some detail, I let it set, I do more detail that set, and uh, I'm carving on it and I'm sculpting it. And both of those things require tools that have handles, and I have to get in at different angles, I have to see it from different angles, so I'm constantly. It's it probably gonna end up being a little too loud. What I find is that the music, um, when I'm when I'm mixing it in uh, Premiere, and I get the levels to where yeah I could totally hear my voice great, uh, and the music is just right. But then after it gets uploaded to YouTube for some reason, it like goes the the music uh it must be a compression thing it's just harder to to hear the voice 
one was to just sculpt it right on there. That's not going to work. Uh, attempt two was to make these. Uh, I basically rolled out my epoxy clay, got it on the basic shape. See, I did it on these inner thigh pieces. Oh, I'm going to turn this up so you guys can hear it better. These thumbtacks and hold them in place. Here's the problem I'm running into. When I remove them in order to sculpt the detail on, there's no way to get these pins back in exactly the same spot they came from. Uh, meaning that they, they're going to float around a little bit. It's going to be hard to uh, keep things correct. So this is my solution that I just came up with. I'm going to uh, kind of paint out okay. body. Is that what this is? Body? I think so. Okay, so uh, this is another thing I didn't want to have to try to figure out. They're stretched, and somehow I still a little too loud so in this case I'm just gonna adjust the audio gain on it down a bit have to fit uh, armor pieces on that that are kind of equally distributed so there's three strips there's his belt and then like another strip and then another strip um, and then there's some bony protuberances that happen around the ribcage still too loud But this is going to make it so, like, you'll barely be able to hear it when it's doing the quiet All that stuff, stuff you, uh, meaning that they, that, explain the tricky part. The tricky thing is that, okay, I think that's about First strip, um, and then there's some, you know, I'm, I'm just going to slightly turn down this section. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so uh, this is another thing I didn't want to have to try to fit three strips. There's his belt, and then like another strip, and then another strip, um, and then there's some bony okay. protuberances that happen around the rib cage. So somehow I've got to make them all be distributed properly. And I was thinking I would draw it on. Oh no, that's then I might have to erase some lines or paint over it or something like that. However, I don't know why I didn't think of this before. If I just use like a uh, tape, tape would probably work. I may have oversold it a little bit when I said this was This one down a bit too. This is brilliant. Let's just call it like competent and leave it there. Alright, so that it's a little high there. This is where it's really good to have good reference. And I think I'm gonna remove these guys. Consider that practice work. Sometimes you have to do that. But that might just be the intro. Let's see. Um, his delightful speedo. I think I can still use. What I might do is maybe saw it into them to get. Yeah, I don't think it's just, it's not quite working for my brand, if you will. Build up the sculpt in the thicker parts where they need to be thicker. And I think I'm going to remove these guys. Just consider that practice work. Sometimes you have to do that. Um, Steel stick. I, I kind of overlap them a little bit like this just because it's often awkward when there's like a little gap between them like that hmm. can't hear this at all through 
through the surface of the, the belt piece. So here's another really annoying thing that I do all the time is wherever there is a big gap between dialogue, I'll uh, turn up the music. And again, I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but it ends up requiring like eight button clicks and such to make it happen. Now, since I need to make these belts uh, pop on and off, I'm going to have to make them in at least two parts, you know, like a front and a back, I, I think. So now if we look at that line, theoretically, this here looks like, so now if we look at that line, theoretically, right here is where the two pieces of the belt will be able to join. And this curve here isn't so much that it will catch in this curve right here. Yeah, that looks about right. that over just a little bit so that it ends naturally where the sped up footage ends. All, all right. Time. Oh, what just happened? Something happened. But I don't know what. Um... Oh, here we go. Dante Vedetti just subscribed. Hey, Dante, thank you, thank you. Mwah, mwah. You're my new favorite. Everyone else can just go suck it. Let's say it's about there. Uh, let's see. Uh, so the rest of this is pretty much just me doing this over and over again. So. Uh, before I just continue to do this over and over again, let's check out this awesome website I've heard of called Breath of Life Art, uh, dot com. So I've heard really good things about uh, the creature design from Tales from Talifar under the Sentient Species. Um, I've heard that... Uh, let's see. Mm. Uh, we just started the chapter on Ungol, so I'm going to talk about them real quick. So, Ungol are anywhere from 4 to 15 inches tall. One of their uh, special characteristics is the ability to rapidly evolve their physiology to a wide variety of environments over a small number of generations. As a result, they have a wide variety of looks, like the monkey family. Oh, oh, should I subscribe to this? I probably should. This is a, such a great website. I will absolutely join this newsletter uh, later. Don't worry, I'll do it later. Um, they generally look like a rabbit mixed with a monkey. Some are hairy, some hairless, some have tails, and some don't. There are nocturnal ones with large eyes, aquatic ones with webbed feet, and winged variety. Some can even inflate specialized sacks with gases for a variety of purposes. What they all share in common are long specialized digits with chemical excretion pores on the ends. They grab the beast to be manipulated around the nose or mouth with these limbs while riding on the back of the head or neck, as you can see here. Learning to soothe and manipulate any kind of animal takes practice and learning. They can't just jump on any old creature and instantly make it dance. The secrets they learn concern... Uh, concerning the right mixture of chemicals, appropriate doses, timing, and sounds are fiercely guarded. The last thing a village of bear herders wants is for a competing faction to learn how to control bears. So yeah, these guys are all about uh, 
figuring out how to uh, ride on mounts and have them wreck your face. Uh, some, some Ungol operate as free agents within larger societies without their own politics or social structure. The majority that do live in Ungol, Uncle, Uncle Enclaves, say that five times fast, uh, really hate the sellouts and they, uh, that they see as sewer rats and slaves for other races. Ungol have the ability to communicate well with and influence almost every other animal on Telefar. This makes them an individual asset to most civilizations. The advantages to being able to tame and control, breed, and drive away wild beasts are obvious. Most beast riders have an Ungol or two as sidekicks, unless they're riding normally docile creatures. In return, the Ungol are usually happy to have fine foods, alcohol, and good company. They will rarely stick around if mistreated, though. Ungol can be quite dangerous, and they can wield their pow power on many large and scary animals. In addition to this, they can hold sway over most beings that have an intelligence of three or lower. This includes the young of most sentient beings. Other races who live near wild Ungol enclaves try to be respectful. Those who do live in their own communities tend to build homes out of, in out-of-the-way places, high in trees, underground, and even in river dams. They build a wide range of structures, everything from woven straw nests to intricate palaces of stone cut and mortar and then here's uh all their stats anyway that's a that's a cool species i'd like to find out more about them i wonder if there's any uh books that include those awesome creatures uh yes yes there are um and they're coming out by the end of the year uh this stream brought to you by pepsi i also thought um, they would make a really cool video game or board game where um, you and your uncle tribe are trying to uh, figure out how to how to tame the various animals in your biome and use them for whatever uh, purposes you see fit, including war or building infrastructure or what have you. All right, time to dive into the war blood. So my understanding is you cut the pieces that you want in your approximate shape. In my case, it's very simple because they're just strips. Let's see. Okay. Come on, move. Thank you. All right, time to dive into the warbler. So my understanding is you cut the pieces that you want in your approximate shape. Oh, yeah, in my case, the first time I ever used warbler. Strips. Exciting times. Um, you use hair dryer, sorry, not a hair dryer, a um, heat gun. I use this on my hair sometime when I'm in a real hurry. And uh, that's that, not true, I don't actually do that. You guys. Cut this one a little short because it is boring anyway. And then this one is cool because it happens to fit almost exactly in this. Being absolute zero apart. in here, it should cool off pretty quickly. these things cool overnight now I'm gonna pop them off hopefully let's we'll see if they pop off let's see shall we put the epoxy clay on it see if it pops back on oh that's the light kind of u-shaped latch that I could off of there just so it doesn't I don't risk it catching fire piece of music because it's going to be interrupted right there. Right up that short. This is short. Uh, 
crossfade that. Here. There's another case where I obviously um, squeezed the heated material too tightly around the anchor pin. right now. Ah, blew a fuse, I guess. That worked. I always like to have at least one jump scare in all of my tutorials. I guess uh, one too many heaters going, which is apparently two. Plus this, I guess that's three heaters. I'm noticing is that as I'm heating one, this would be front. It's too loud. So many things are just too loud all the time. I feel like an old person. Uh, top. Oh wait, I am an old person. And then I'll have a front middle and a front bottom. stretch nothing no man's land data that came with these things so it would just like automatically there was a way to just have it automatically pop up on the video when it came. Oh actually I do credit these guys. That's right. Last time I figured out a way to credit them I uh I just put that giant block of the names down in the uh, description. showing it at the moment when it's happening, but it's at least something. Okay, real quick. 
I just want to show you a couple of upgrades that I made to the old garage, I mean, art studio recently. Uh, the first thing I've got here is a... Okay, real quick, I just want to show you a couple of upgrades that I made to the old garage, I mean, art studio. Really neutral thing, and... Uh, you can, yeah, come on back here. This looks very loud. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna guess I'm gonna wanna lower that a bit. So I've got this uh, this plastic here both because it serves really well as a kill room, all the blood spatters on there and the quilt stuff that you put in blankets. I don't know. A jeweler's saw does, right? Uh, that with this new stuff I will be able to make stuff better and more faster -er. okay so let's get back to work stop slowing me down I've got work to do there's such a big gap here I think what I'm gonna do is fill out with some really good music which is uh, Lena Raines music she uh, composed the soundtrack to um, what's that uh, side-scroller indie game came out a couple months ago everyone's excited about with the red-headed girl it's a name. The name is a name. Anyway, that. Um, did the soundtrack to that. And uh, got a lot of good press for it. But she's also a friend of mine. And uh, let me use this, uh, her stuff, in return for crediting her. Which, as you know, I am more than happy to do. description it can go all the way up here that is all music is YouTube royalty free stuff see description for list okay yes that's a good thing and then this is the acoustic collection Please don't kill me, Lena, for butchering your music by swapping it together like this.
something like this. right at the bloop? That's the question. going anyways this uh, Seattle online broadcaster organization event just pretend to be sociable and force myself to talk to people some strangers you guys some strangers anyway anyway it's all for the greater good um, yeah thanks for hanging out with me for another day of me um, doing pretty mundane stuff, but uh, hey, uh, like I always say, I like to show how the sausage is made, because uh, you never know when creative types are like, you know, I feel like I should edit some videos together and make something. Josh can do it, anyone can do it. So yeah, there you go, there you go. All right, um, I just realized because I set up Streamlabs OBS, I might not have it set up to auto record. So this may not go to YouTube. This may be an ephemeral once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, so, you know, appreciate what you guys have. Uh, yep, I'll try to have fun with you. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday with apparently a very special guest. See you guys later. Bye.